Good to see you back for our, what happens to be our 176th episode of Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, broadcasting live once more from the opposite ends of the world. Me, uh, your host, Martin Disbang here from uh, chillingly cold tempered Germany. And you, DeSoto, uh, back in tropically uh, exotic Honolulu. Hi, DeSoto. How do you do? And it's very, very nice and warm here and the windows are open and the sun is out and there are birds and trade winds and it's just the way it's supposed to be for Christmas. That's good. And thanks to your question, as we see in our daily uh, reading here of the online New York Times, I'm doing better than most anywhere in the United States, which is sad to report that it's leading, not dealing very well with uh, the COVID crisis we're still in. Uh, you back in Honolulu doing fairly well uh, with, I think you said, uh, from 2% up to 3 which is uh, not a good development, but it's all relative, so it's still relatively good. But the picture the New York Times was having their headline pictures here looks like a doomsday Gotham City, right? <laughs> well, where is that? Well, that you said that is that not Munich? That's, it is uh, downtown Munich. Yeah, where... and it's um, and it and it's devoid of people. And you also said all of the stores, all the non-essential stores, have been closed, which is a terrible thing to happen right before Christmas for people who are retailers. Um, here in Honolulu, we do not have that lockdown, fortunately, um, but we're very, very good about wearing our masks. So you do see a lot of people. For example, I've been to Ala Moana twice. Well, quite a few shoppers, not as much as usual, but everybody's covered up with a mask. And so we're taking it seriously and fortunately keeping our numbers low. And the, yeah. the vaccination has now been introduced and it's just getting started. So yeah. hopefully we will be seeing um, things getting much better in the coming months to look forward to for the new year of 2021. Absolutely, because this is our final concluding show of this year. And once again, Angela, our president, uh, Bundeskanzler, had to put us from a lockdown light, which we were in, to a lockdown tight again, which we used to have at the beginning of the year. But, but now it's back to try to get things under control because we're disadvantaged because we have to be indoors by that time of the year because it's cold and that's where the virus spreads. So once again, these are all measurements. But again, as you said, this is tragic because this is the most busy time of the year uh, as far as capitalism having hijacked basically that Christian holiday of, of Christmas, Weihnachten as we call it. And there are two times of the year is that you guys, American, like to travel to Germany and Munich in particular is this time of the year to be on the Weihnachtsmarkt, the Christmas markets, uh, enjoying the, the mold wine steaming in their hands while being bundled up. So that's not happening. So the other option is to be indoors, which we have to be. It's not an option, sorry. It's what we have to be. And then we might dream of the opposite of tropical islands, right? Right. And so let's get our spirits back to that one. Next slide. So back to the regions of banana trees and uh, tiki uh, sculptures. And next slide, we're back in Hawaii, right? No, we're not, no, we're not. Um, you pointed out that this, maybe if you look sort of with your eyes half closed, it might be someplace like Manoa because you see a hill in the background. But if you look more closely beyond the architecture, which doesn't look very Hawaiian, although you pointed out again, there are places in Hawaii that don't have tropical architecture, but we can see that on growing on the hill, there are crops that are growing, being grown in lines. And you pointed out those are vines, those are grape vines, because this is a wine growing region that you are in right now, correct? Yeah, and featuring at the top, we owe this location to our exotic escapism expert, Zuzana, who takes us there. And that gets us to the next slide, which is the city we introduced in the last show already, the city that had been basically bombed uh, during the Second World War and has been rebuilt. 
Uh, this is a picture from a couple days ago where uh, the letters love are being placed in the vineyards and, and sending that message uh, in these challenging times. And so let's go and stroll through the city a little bit. Let's go to the next slide. This is uh, sort of remembering the year. This was between the, the, the current lockdown and the first lockdown. Uh, things were loosening again and people were able to go to these. Uh, this is, uh, we always have your weekly German lessons. So here we're looking at a Weinstube. What did you learn? What is a Weinstube? Um, it's a wine living room. Um, meaning not literally a living room, but in this case, uh, allegorically referring to the living room that you would have in your private home. And in this case, you gather together to drink wine. And that's written in the Gothic writing, so it's not even easy to read, even if you <laughs> can read German, which I can't. Yeah, that's my grandparents' writing, exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> so next slide is uh, strolling through town once again, which we said... Um, had to be rebuilt after the war. And this is, uh, again, you're wondering, talking cases, Würzburg was actually one of the worst hit cities. Uh, and then uh, people, as it doesn't quite look like here because the only woman who doesn't even wear the mask but has the mask sort of pulled down is at the very bottom left, but everyone else is not. So, but different than the picture indicates, uh, people were behaving and gotten things under control. So right now it's actually one of the least affected reason, regions in Germany. And you also can see some of that vine stuff uh, here growing up on some of these uh, buildings that have this old pattern of that people live above their ground floor, uh, ground floor businesses, uh, which gets us to the next slide. And look at one of the stores here in the main pedestrian uh, areas, a little bit more in particular, the Soto. This is yet another one of the things that amazes me that uh, here's a store in Germany and it's called Palms of Paradise and it has a tropical theme. And again, it always surprises me when I encounter people in Germany thinking about Hawaiian islands and not just the Hawaiian islands, but other tropical locations. And there's a lot of people tend to sort of amalgamate the Caribbean and maybe Africa and maybe Asia along with the Pacific and just put them all together in sort of a tropical theme. So this is a women's clothing store and it's, as you pointed out to me, it's on the main shopping street in, in this town and it has light summer clothing. But if you look at the interior detailing, for example, the clothes racks are suspended from the ceiling by ropes and they've got uh, baskets that are covering up the light fixtures. So they're adding to this entire tropical theme for this show. But if you look in the distance down the street, you're gonna see a very different type of architecture, which is traditionally German and has nothing to do with palms or paradise. No, but maybe there is this combination because this is a less sort of heavy, literal, it's a more loose, as you pointed out, alluding to the tropics. Uh, more in a way of Tarzani with the ropes and maybe like, like a shipwreck kind of island that yeah. you have to make things from scratch. <laughs> That's right. So more an essentialized way. Right. And so the uh, building in the, in the distance at the vista uh, that you point out, which as going to the next slides, is that main church uh, in town that is a gothical church. And last show we've been showing both the Baroque and the than the, the, the Gothic, and we said they're kind of in dialogue, but you might say they're like arguing, right, to say mm -hmm. the very least. Mm -hmm. And the Gothic pretty much, um, as Ron likes to call what Ed Killingsworth uh, and him have been doing, structural expressionism, that's pretty much what the Gothic mentality was, to just do the essentials and don't do a thing, don't, and let the structure be the ornament, right, versus right. the the, the Baroque that was throwing the stuff on it and, and basically putting makeup on it, right? Yes, so, exactly. Go to the next slide, um, which shows us another, again, at the opposite end of the world with different climates, but we find interesting similarities as in both cases here on the left, Würzburg, where you basically see a Baroque church at the end of that street. 
but you can also see the wine bluffs, the vegetated ones being pretty apparent and, and basically being the focus of the vista of the, the street canyons. And on the right, this is one of the similar scenarios in Honolulu. This is one of the situations in downtown where I'm always amazed that when the weather is clear and there is no clouds over the mountains, they look very, very close as you can almost grab them, right? Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. Yeah, and go and you, as you said that the, the jungle seems to, the, the heavy vegetation seems to just sort of trickle down and run down into the city itself. If you've got big trees growing along the street, you look at the distance and heavy tropical vegetation is in the far distance and it seems to be around you even in an urban area. Mm -hmm. And next slide, if we look into that city from the other direction, we yet have to more fully introduce, and we will in, a, in one of the following shows, our new sort of mid long range PI mobile is Audi A2, which is exotic to you because yep. that never made it to the US. So we will talk about that. But until then, we want to point out that building there that basically pops out because it's heavily overgrown with nature. So we want to look at that closer. Next slide. And that's also what you see behind me. And you said it almost looks like the jungle is like eating me alive. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> and this is this is a plant that comes from North America and it's called Virginia creeper. And so it's been introduced to Germany in other temperate zones. It's also it's also grown and it has this very lush, thick growth of leaves. But um, we're going to see that they're not there all year. And it also in this case alludes to what we're going to see inside this building. We're looking at the facade of this building, but we're about to see what's inside and we're going to see some other similar touches, even though it's not literally the same plant, but we haven't gotten there yet. Yeah, but we will. So next slide gets us closer. This shows us again the facades and the, the windows have been left you know, open. So they're cutting it and trimming it to keep the view and, and the daylight. And then there is this light fixture that's uh, pointing to what we, if we go to the next slide, pointing to a certain feature of the facade. And that was sort of puzzling you, right? There's this... Exactly, because it's a Madonna and baby Jesus. And so I wonder why she happens to be on the front of a secular building, which is not obviously not a church, but it's appropriate since we're talking about Christmas and we're just a short distance in time from Christmas. But if you look more closely at the bottom of this picture, there's a sign and that's for the business that is located here and it's called Ohana. And if you look more closely, the O of the Ohana, which of course is a Hawaiian word meaning family, is got these two sort of vertical things stuck into it. And those are chopsticks because this is a Hawaiian themed restaurant which makes reference to poke and of course the Asian elements which we have in our local culture today. And mm -hmm. however, inside is not 100% Hawaiian as we're about okay. to see. Let's go inside and dive in and zoom in. <laughs> so there's a, there's a tiki sculpture there, right? Well, no, 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 no. There, there are tiki sculptures in the upper right corner, and that's me with a big fake one that was installed at Fisher Museum for a party, but also two original carvings, two original images that are authentic Hawaiian, which we used in an exhibit, which we had recently at Fisher Museum uh, to honor uh, the donation of a similar, very valuable carving, which was donated to us. But here in the Ohana restaurant, there's a different type of carving. That is a grapevine. Those are clusters of grapes on a grapevine. So perhaps this building used to house a wine living room before it became the Ohana restaurant. We don't know. No, that's the case. You got that right. And to the next slide, we see more what that is because it's talking structural expressionism. This is a finely carved column that's actually holding up a, a beam up there. So this is not just ornamental as we like to criticize when you do things just for the look. This is actually has a function to hold up the building, but at the same time, it's demonstrating exactly what you were guessing that that used to be a Weinstube. And now it's been converted by this gentleman. His name is Ruben Mada. And I'm sort of holding up his business card here. 
of which he gave me when we were walking by and you see Suzanne here and started to engage him. And he's a fairly young man who started this business and we, you know, exposed ourselves and I was pulling out my business card that <laughs> smile that there is someone inspecting uh, almost um, and knowledgeable um, um, in the, the region that he's alluding to. And we started to have an interesting discussion. And you can see in the background, this was pretty much uh, during the first lockdown. Uh, and so, uh, but luckily he had something uh, that we see indicated in the background here of him. You see uh, a floor to ceiling uh, glazed in uh, door window. Then we go to the next slide that basically uh, gets to a, what we had dedicated nine shows to, which is something that could be very helpful during the COVID times. Uh, especially in climates that you have year round that you can be outside and dine outdoors. And this is a courtyard here or a patio that he had, but wasn't able to utilize at that point. But next slide, luckily, uh, very soon after when Würzburg was doing better and they basically were opening up more, we were able to basically have one of these very delicious poke bowls there. And, <laughs> You know, and feeling good, being probably approximately, you know, sufficiently distanced from the people uh, next there, which is probably the, the two meters, uh, like the six feet uh, you're required to do. But uh, let's go to the next slide and see uh, his main guest room, which he was not able to use at that point uh, of the first lockdown. And then even, you know, when things got opened up again, obviously people preferred to use the outdoor spaces. And so here is Suzanne and him engaging in a discussion of that. It's interesting that he isn't so much pulling the what mid-century was the case when very uh, almost any, any American city had a Polynesian top themed tiki restaurant. And even in, in Germany and in Munich, which is the big, capital of that state of Bavaria, we were talking once before that is one of the most authentic, if there is such a thing, of Polynesian pop uh, restaurants is the Trader Vix in downtown Munich in the basement of the most upscale hotel. While that one is very literally uh, pre-contact uh, tiki themed, this one here seems to be rather lo more loosely alluding to what you said, a more a blend of tropical exactly. influences. And you know, but, but when we look at uh, Waikiki today, for example, there are various hotels which have been refurbished that were mid-century buildings, which have now been turned into more hip, smaller hotels. And they use this same type of kind of quasi just tropical, amalgamated tropical motifs too, with the same color palette of green and, and, perp and pink. Um, so what he's done there really looks like some of the things that are happening really here in real life as well um, in current trends. That's right. So to that degree, it is a more authentic interpretation of what's currently going on. And also talking performatively in COVID, next slide, as what we said, you know, many restaurants should have done that even before COVID, and they for, should for sure do it more now, and they should do it post COVID, is more embrace the outdoors. So yes. there should be more outdoor eating. And so not only does he have that sort of, um, you know, back uh, patio, but he also has a front yard outdoor dining area where he was able to convince the city to uh, give to him, probably rent out a couple of the parking stalls that he could put outdoor benches there instead. And we caught him here nicely, tidily cleaning up before he opened the restaurant in the, in the later morning and gets us to the next slide because there's also the menu displayed. And this is your extended uh, <laughs> German uh, weekly German lesson, but in this case, you didn't have to do too much German, right? Weren't you lucky? No. <laughs> There's very little German on this menu, which again amazes me how prevalent the use of English is in Germany. Uh, the menu, which all of the names of all of the dishes are in English and they use Hawaiian words. I mean, he's using things like Ohana, he's using things like Kupuna. Um, and the descriptions of what are in each dish are printed in German, 
but everything else is in English. So I can read what's on this menu. I can't read everything that's in the dishes, mm -hmm. but I can read the menu. And again, mm -hmm. this is just for German people. Everyone's expected to be able to read and understand English. And I find that amazing. For you, it's not a big deal, but for me, it amazes me. Yeah. And also, if we're thinking about the original Poke Bowl, which we said original means that's also not indigenous. Correct. This is an invention. And as you said, a blend of many other cultures. And he here was adjusting that to the European taste, which is unlike the Japanese, not that used to eating the, the, the fish like it, our favorite on my, in my hood at, uh, at um, basically, uh, you know, on, uh, on, on Kapahulu, Ono seafood, which is basically just the marinated fish and rice. And that's pretty much it. But the European taste likes it more blended with more vegetables and other things. So he's catering to that. So he's once again, interpreting that. And next slide, unlike as we've been discussing in previous shows, where in the past of mid-century, it was more literally alluding to, to tiki and, and pre-content um, and contact content. Uh, next slide. Uh, just like this reminded me of, of other people who have also been doing this in a more interpretive way, right? Yes, and I'm trying to see now, what am I looking at here? You're looking um, at Clara and Joey's enterprise. Oh, that's right, that's right, because that was the shave ice wagon. That was the rainbow colored shave ice wagon and uh, your son and his wife did. And that again is a, not a Hawaiian invention, Certainly, we didn't have ice, we didn't shave it. But when that got started in the 20th century, it became a local specialty of flavor of ice with flavored syrup poured over it. And so that's something that we think of as being Hawaiian, even though it obviously didn't originate here 100%. Yeah, but now it's part of local culture, as absolutely you perfectly called it. And now the younger generations as Ruben and Clara and Joey are interpreting that in, yeah. in their playful and joyful way, yes. not using, not getting caught up with chevrons and all these kind of more <laughs> yeah, right, symbols right. and, and yeah. ornaments, but basically being creatively interpreting that and giving it more meaningfulness. Right. Uh, again, as we pointed out, and one of your favorite shows of mine is, is the, is the evolution of, of the tradition of innovation on the island. So yes, it's in that right. tradition to keep things right. evolving and interpreting them, always keeping them fresh and, and fun versus basically mummified, you know? And, right, and, and, right, and static. Exactly, so more dynamic. And next slide is proving that again. Uh, once he has a couple of signs that are more or less sort of more touristy alluding to you know, to Hawaii, but but otherwise he has letters where you said from the second row there was an an, an eye falling off, but but otherwise it's it's again guten appetit means enjoy mm -hmm. your dinner or your lunch, mm -hmm. and and it's saying that in my language and it's saying it in your language, and other than that on the left side he has these two maps framed there they're basically juxtaposing and comparing our two locations. If you and Honolulu, <laughs> we can point out directly to where exactly we are. At the, <laughs> right. or, you know, I used to be and you are at the foot of Diamond Head or up in the Diamond Head now yeah. as you are and us in Würzburg. And yeah. this is interesting to do this in a very sort of a, you know, non-mystical, cryptical, but very kind of true and honest way. Right. And right. you think about things that we both like as poke balls, but also, you know, things that are significantly different as for example, it makes culture is climate. And that gets us to the next slide because unlike at your place where basically, you know, it stays summer all, all the time here, it used to be still during the summer. And there was already discussions, which is that little headline we threw in there at the very top where they were debating about what they were afraid of, which then became problematic is how they're gonna continue to stay in business when it gets cold. And they were thinking about positioning these uh, electric heaters on the streets, uh, you know, giving off their radiation by burning gas, you know, from gas bottles. 
and this was a discussion that was, you know, all the same in all the temperate climates in the world. This was talking about in New York City. And, um, and also here, uh, your last part of keeping bugging you with your German lessons, what does it say on that sign in front of his restaurant? Uh, it says something like, and you explain this to me, and I may say it wrong, even today, you can have your, you can have your portion of vacation. Is that exactly. right? So yeah, so like meaning that come into my restaurant and it can pretend you're on vacation in a warm tropical place. Exactly. And it sort of says, you know, take out your piece and then that taking out became more actual and factual next slide when these leaves were turning yellow first and temperature got colder, you see the cars got their parking stall back because it was too mm -hmm. cold for people. And he decided yeah. not to have that, you know, global climate problematic, um, you know, heating the outdoors. And you see the graves we're talking about, which are kind of that miniature version of the, yeah. of the real vineyard graves. Right, and right. This slide is from a few days ago when, uh, let me get to the next slide. We see all the leaves pretty much gone. The Madonna becomes more apparent there. And also we see, and we wish uh, Ruben all the best that he stays afloat with his business. We certainly support him and continue to buy uh, his delicious bowls as takeouts. And he has this uh, little scooter there and a bicycle and that, that, that box in the back that basically the delivery guys you know, bring it to you guys out there, or you can go and order online and basically pick it up. So we basically, uh, you know, wish you all the best, Ruben, to, to survive these tough times. For us, it's a reminder again, how blessed we are to be able to have vegetation on the facades shading us all year round, as I think it was almost exactly a year ago, we did the show at the very top right, the Hermes store as part of the Royal Hawaiian Shopping Center, that remodeling that we liked. And again- and We're gonna be doing a show in a short time next month in January, in which we're gonna be seeing this same Virginia creeper vine used not for decoration and not just to make the facade look pretty, but for an architectural functional purpose for another building that you encountered in Germany, which I found very intriguing. So that's something we will be discussing that has great application for us here in Hawaii as well, which we are not currently making use of as much as we should be. That's absolutely true. Looking forward to that. And until then, second to last slide, that's you wishing me frohe Weihnachten, as we call um, happy holidays. And how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> well, we say Meli Kalikimaka, which is Merry Christmas, but that is, that, is the, that is the Brown family Christmas tree or Tannenbaum, which is being uh, purchased and having the bottom cut off with President Barack Obama's childhood home in the background, the famous building that he grew up in, and that's my Christmas, and then we can go to see your Christmas where you yes. are. Second to last slide. slide, and that's me returning the Christmas greetings. And as the talking exotic, the Tannenbaum, originating in German culture, as the name indicates, is exotic to you because it yep. doesn't grow on your island. So you will, you cra you have a craving for it and get it. And here we are again. Uh, this is our exotic escapism expert Suzanne bundled up, also masked up. Thanks, Suzanne. And that was some few weeks ago when we had the only snow so far on the ground. And you see that central plaza in town, you see that Gothic church on the right, and you see the large uh, lit up Christmas tree. Again, that was even before uh, getting us locked down tight and the lockdown light. And you see that even there, you know, there are very few people out there. And that's probably one of the indications why uh, Woodsburg after they were doing not so good, had many cases, they were doing better because people were already behaving. So obviously that's just our biggest Christmas wish for the world, stay happy and healthy. And hopefully uh, the next year, we're gonna be able to get uh, that um, pandemic uh, under control globally. 
Ja. So with that, uh, the Soto for Weihnachten und ein frohes neues Jahr, which means Happy New Year, because we also ban fireworks for yeah. New Year. Yeah, also I saw because that. of, again, the environment, environmental impact, which is the other big crisis we have going on. Uh, it's uh, keeping people from gathering and then yes. spreading the virus. So once yes. again, yes. With all that, again, uh, happy holidays yes. to you, the Soto, and to everyone else. Yep. And as you already announced, the Soto, we have an exciting new show lined up already to yep. kick off, and I think that's going to be on January 6th. So yep. looking forward to that. Happy holidays. Bye, everybody. Aloha and Nelly Kalikimaka.